Hi everyone, this is Nibiru Watcher. It is November 7th, 2017. And over in Nigeria, we had a blinking sun. So if we still have any skeptics out there, but still say that we don't have a sun simulator, you are, you know, for a rude awakening, like these people were in Nigeria. Now, when I say a fake sun, I'm not saying the real sun still ain't there. But this thing is here to hide the unexpected solar eclipses. But now it's failing. Let's just watch as people in Nigeria witness this very event. And I have a pretty good explanation why this is happening. So here we can see people freaking out, taking pictures, looking at it. I mean, it's absolutely obvious to everybody in the audience here. In fact, we've got women in here raising their arms, worshiping God or repenting or whatever. So let's just keep watching. Let me fast forward this a little bit. We can see people uh, got their hands in the air. Uh, this was a pretty famous. I mean, they, I mean, they got the cell phones looking at this thing. Okay, so obviously they know. Look at this guy with his camera. He's checking it out. Okay, this is happening. Let's watch it some more. I mean, it it's epically failing. That's the fake sun failing because it's being eclipsed. Absolutely crazy. It's almost like, is that a Morse code or is this for real, right? I mean, you know, I, I could be wrong in my theory, and, you know, this could just be setting the stage for the fake alien invasion and, the, you know, aliens are messing with the sun. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to follow that fake alien. I'm calling it fake. Okay, so. Okay, so let me take you to a... A video taken from a live feed from the National Space Station, ISS, and I call it the International Sun Simulator. Now what we have here is this thing just firing up. Look at this thing. I believe this light here is a light beam, lasers that are being fed into a gas chamber the source of energy for the fake sun simulator. And I believe the source of this energy is being beamed to it by microwave energy. They use microwave energy because it could be beamed far farther than anything else. And so, in fact, this idea of a gas chambered let me just see if we get into it here. A gas chambered <laughs> Dr. Claudia Albers, physicist, had proposed an idea and really broke this thing down quite well. Here's the pictures and still shots of the sun simulator that we just saw. This continuous beam of light, she says, and I agree with her, that is being pumped into this ionizing plasma gas chamber, making this thing super bright. The venting process here may be actually a feed for more laser input. The side that we're facing is the sun-facing camera. She proposes a an invention here, and I agree fairly with the conceptual idea of having a gas chamber. I'm not sure of these shutters. I think these are these lights, there is shutters. Well, this is the forward-facing lens, and this is a shutter that can be opened and closed. These ports on the outside, this this side would face the the earth and we can see this conceptual idea this this is what i want to talk about this laser beam generation device she says it's being put into the entrance of the thing but i think it could also be being fed from the outside as well but she just it's not not bad see how the laser beams are being beamed into this thing
but the source energy from this laser beam is something I would like to talk about. And let me just show you a few more clips of the powerful evidence that as the sun is coming directly above us, we'll get a round surface. But if it approaches us at an angle, we get peculiar pictures like this angular light here. This is why we have this cone shape of light. Kind of all we had in my other sun simulator examples. Next, we have an idea that I propose that this thing, thanks to the Strategic Defense Initiative, this is how, if we had this gas chamber thing here and this laser, <clears throat> so basically we'd have solar collectors in space. In fact, NASA's already worked on it. I'm just kind of showing you my drawing of it. And so has PG&E. I will show you the articles. That these sun simulators, the solar collectors power for this device could be placed all around the sun in an orbit, just like they do with SDO, or sun orbiting, and then refocus the energy onto a single plate or beam. Wow, just like the movie Star Wars, right? SDI. So this light would be converting solar DC power into these collectors into a wave microwave energy, which can be transmitted for a very long distance and focus them on a single plate receptor and then focus this energy and then bounce them at different beams. So here then we have the sun simulator here emitting its light, like I've showed you in my other examples with the Fresnel's lens. Next, let's get into uh, the microwave technology. So we have the Japanese have working at creating space-based renewable energy, basically putting solar collector panels, collectors orbiting the sun. I'll leave links of all this. You could just check out space-based energy. But a couple of key things I want to show you that the timing of these events of these solar collectors that the Japanese have already worked on. Space-based solar farms. How about this one? This is from the Department of Energy. <laughs> Laser beam emitting solar satellites. Right? These things orbit around the sun. They collect its energy and beam its light back to the Earth. Microwave energy is can be sent as long as 35,000 kilometers, while laser light can only be sent for 400. This shows the pros and cons of these two different technologies. This here would be a solar energy transducer that would transduce the solar energy back to, into a microwave energy and this one into a laser energy. The pros and cons. And then beaming it back to Earth on solar farms. This is an article energy from outer space and what we have again solar collectors orbiting the sun and powering different devices energy from space beaming it back to the earth on a spot and then converting it back to AC current on the earth and then giving you free energy well I see some serious problems with this one look at this PG&E makes a deal for space on solar power. I want you to check out the date on this one. California's energy utility purchased 12, 200 megawatts of electricity from a startup company that beams power to the earth from outer space beginning in 2016. The same company that put in smart meters. You know what smart meters are? They're, they, it's a cellular device. It gives them direct communication to the cellular network. And a cellular receiving unit could be tri triangulated on to give you a very price, precise precision. <laughs> Maybe you see where I'm going with this one? The California fires with the precise lasers that we have, they now know where exactly where you live. Wow. The same power company that provides you power knows exactly where you live and now have the technology to beam microwave energy to the earth. Uh-oh. Or uh, Business Insider. Uh, this is more than conceptual. The Japanese have already 
doing it, PG&E's been doing it. In fact, they've been beaming their microwave energy to the Mojave Desert, and they wanted to redirect that energy to Sebastopol. Well, that's awfully close to Napa Valley. A giant beam of energy in the form of microwaves, and uh, we all know what microwaves can do to water and things that live and, and vibrate at a very high frequency. And you know, and all they have to do is redirect this microwave, all this microwave energy into a single laser generator and basically had weaponized it. Funny how, you know, the fires happened right on Geostorm. Go watch the movie Geostorm, by the way, that shows satellites beaming laser energy all the way to the Earth. Wow. So let me go back to this drawing here. That what I think of what was happening here that these solar collectors were far out in outer space, much close, further out than our, our Earth. It, the moment this energy has been blocked from supplying its source energy, we have our intruder here. So they turn on the sun simulator to keep light shining on the sky. But there's a problem. Once this thing gets really close, these beams get blocked. They no longer supply light. Do we have any evidence of this? Yes. Let's watch. In my previous video, I had made with a high-speed moon traveling at the Earth. And in front of it were the seven planets and seven moons of Nibiru, Planet X. So here we see the high-speed shadowy moons moving at us. And then right after that, we get a giant shadowy object trailing in behind it. So then here we get this object. And then after it comes in, I left this video. Please go back and watch the whole uninterrupted version of it. But I'm speeding this thing up. And we can see that this thing comes in. It orbits around in a boomerang like fashion because the system is spiraling at us and then basically just vanishes. And then in this video, I had a YouTube subscriber to a time lapse video of this object passing in front of the sun. Let's watch that again. See that shadow? A time lapse video. I hope to catch that one day. Next time your skies look like that, go get a time lapse video and look at that. This object here. I believe is breaking these microwave beams that supply the energy of this thing. So the problem I believe has been solved. Let's look again, this sun simulator, every time this beam is break, we don't have the sun simulator. It is the source of energy. If that source of energy is blocked, then this thing dims out and flashes out. It seems to match the pattern and the speed of the sun. So if I am right, this thing's getting close enough with its moons now breaking the beams of a flick of the sun simulator. So every time this thing goes out, we lose the sun. And that's what that beam is. That's a laser beam. But I believe this laser beam gets its energy from the remote solar collectors. Two of them, by the way. That's great, because if one beam gets broken, you have a backup beam from another source. But if they both break, the thing must be getting pretty close. That's my theory on that. And there you got Maybe it's an alien symbology. Let's look at this microwave energy being directed at the Earth. Now look at that. Dry twigs and brush were not affected, right? But the tree burns from the inside out. Microwave energy. Let me keep playing this video. Here we go.
Look at those ashes, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. This isn't California fire. That's what's actually scary about it. They've been test firing. I think they missed their mark. Or they're just, they're trying to, they, they could get the target, or they're just messing with this guy. See what this thing can do to a tree. That's exactly what microwave energy would do. Come on now. What would ever do that, people? <laughs> yeah. Energy from space. Is that what they're going to do with this space based weapon? Is this what they're going to do with us? Energy direct it all into the earth and take us out if they don't like us? Yeah. Energy beamed from collectors from around the sun impulsed energy onto a single point microwave energy converted into a laser energy and then fire that burst of energy wherever they want onto mirrors onto their final target wow yeah I like that scene wasn't that crazy people yeah So you still want to think it's a real sun? Look at this sun. Look at this hexagonal sun. And look, we can almost make out the laser beams. And uh, I'd like to show you some NASA photos here. What I believe to be laser mounts on the ISS. Now this is left out on any photos I've ever seen from the International Space Station. What the heck is that? I'll tell you, those are lasers very high powered in fact it looks like it's in the infrared spectrum too because it's red yeah it could be wrong and they have technology of shaping the wave and changing its frequency to any frequency they want that would give them the capability of melting anything once you find its fundamental wave frequency you can vibrate it and cause it to affect just like microwave energy can affect mostly water but there's other frequencies that can affect other things like metal steel aluminum Anyways, hope you like this video. Hope you like my explanation. I believe it was the high speed moons that were these objects here. It moving around like in a spiral like flurry around planet X. We saw it first and then we can see the huge shadowy planet that came in. Look at the dates, people. Think times are getting strange. It's the only explanation I have, unless you think it's aliens sending signals to us. But maybe that's the narrative they'll push. As we keep seeing stranger, larger, darker clouds, they're just going to say it was aliens messing with us the whole time. And, uh, yeah, I think Ronald Reagan even said it would take an alien threat to unite the whole world. Hmm. Watch that famous speech. That was in 19. And that gave birth to the SDI, Space Defense Initiative. But is this what's going to happen to it, right? Anyways, have a blessed day. Copy, like, and share this video. See you at the Lord's Supper.